Stay petty, my friends. Today we're going to pick up with the Iron Warriors, and there's no better place to start than with the heresy and how they were treated during the heresy. Uh, you know the drill by now, the Ultramarines and the Blood Angels are the two uh, left at the polls. And as always, the choice is yours, uh, and the way you vote is by leaving it in the comments. That's how you make yourself heard, and it's literally how you dictate the arc of the podcast. Now, by this point, the Iron Warriors have committed an un countable number of atrocities they don't think the emperor can forgive any of them even, even though i'll be honest the emperor he did his fair share of massacring he, back in the day yeah he, he engaged in it he, he'd probably look at purdy and go oh you one mass only one i know really rookie numbers only <laughs> only a a handful of war crimes i, I need Come on, we can get a bucket going. Exactly. What I will say is, during the heresy, while everyone else was, um, everyone else was engaging, every every traitor legion was basically taking out their various issues on the rest of the galaxy. It was one big, very violent therapy session, and the Iron Warriors, they they didn't they didn't do more than any other legion per se, but they did do it different. They actually split. During the heresy, a few times actually, some stayed loyalist because uh, actually, quite a few Iron Warriors stayed loyalist and wound up taking the most wins of any Iron Warrior ever. Um, and then some went off to create this. Uh, oh, hold on, I need to find a specific name for it. This Empire of Iron, and it's basically their version of the Realm of Ultramar, but it which. Is basically just their own section in space that they control using their logistical minds and that that kind of stuff. It, it did not last very long. Unfortunately, it, it 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 basically imploded on itself when the Iron Warriors were backed into a corner and they decided, if I can't have it, no one can. And then they literally glassed every planet. Seems to be the mentality of every Iron Warrior. If I can't have it, nobody can. If I can't win, I can make sure you don't. I won't lose. I'll make sure you don't win. I'll, I won't lose. I'll make sure you feel bad. And and then the rest of them went off with Peter Turbo to commit. Well, not commit, but to do. They were stuck doing the same stuff as before. They were heresying. No, no, no. They were do, stuck doing the same grunt work as before. Oh. Not even just heresying. Horus had them doing basically the same stuff that the Emperor did. So they just sighed and got back to digging the trenches again. But they were carrying the heresy on their backs, uh, all the way to Terra, honestly, doing the worst, just the worst, the things Horus needed to get done, but nobody wanted to do, the Iron Warriors wound up doing. This time, with even less hope, because they were stuck doing the same attrition-style tactics against Gilliman, the no-neck-having, pencil-pushing dork of the Imperium who cares only about administration, governance, and logistics. They went against the guy whose entire gig is making sure every pencil is in the right place. And their job was to beat him in sustained long-term war. Problem. <laughs> Pertrabo's very it's he's it's, screaming. No, it it's it's a very nice contest of minds because they're both properly different in I mean they're properly hold on, sorry. Because they're both properly brilliant, just in different ways. Pertrabo can build fortifications and machines like nobody's business. Gilliman doesn't get close. If if you ask them to assemble a Lego set, Purdy will do it better every time. Ten times out of ten. Now Will Gilliman know where every single piece is, was, and was shipped from? Yes. Gilliman, Gilliman could probably write the manuals and ship them out. E exactly. Could he start his own Lego company? Sure. Who do you want building and designing them, though? Pertrava. Um, and it this, this ability to construct machinery is what allows him to crush pretty much anything in his way with his sheer might. He's very much a work harder kind of individual. Whereas Gilliman's whole strength is he's the ultimate statesman. If I can't do it, I'll find somebody who can and then put them in a system that's going to nurture them and grow them so that they can do this on my behalf to the best of their ability. Gilliman isn't good at everything, but the reason he gets away with so much is because he has somebody who's good at any one thing. So it's not so much, oh, Gilliman can accomplish anything he sets his mind to. Gilliman has a guy for that. It is, is it's, what, it's what it's closest to. And 
So, so it, what you're saying is Gilliman is the DJ Khaled of the Warhammer 40k universe, where he's not in his own right good at anything, but he just knows so many people who are. Um, I I, I can I can see that. Now I just want to see Gilliman shouting his name over over random things. I mean, he ba- he basically well, he doesn't shout his name over random things. He signs Ultra over everything. The Ultramarines, uh, okay. Ultramar. Okay, okay, yeah. Like, it, I, I see. Yeah, no, this is that, the DJ. That, yeah. this is in fact the DJ Khaled I, of the Forty K. I'm going universe. to gloss over that because I like Gilliman too much to think of that. It's a battle of managers, effectively, with one side being. We've all had this manager, the worst kind, who demands you be there earlier than everybody else, later than everyone else, and you will work hard to get this task done. And to be fair to Perturabo, he's there before the store opens, he's there after the store closes. Every bottle is organized the perfect way, every single time. All the inventory numbers are smack dab perfect, and everything's running as it should through sheer force of will. Purdy is there four hours after you've closed to make sure it's working right. He's that kind of manager. He's cleaning the shelves with a toothbrush (laughs) every night. Yeah, and he expects you to match that energy. If you can't match even half of it, you're useless to him. Whereas Gilliman is a more laissez-faire approach. It's more about working smarter, not necessarily harder. So it's, it's. I believe it's Archimedes who said, if you give me a long enough lever and a good fulcrum, I could move the world. That's how Gilliman chooses to move worlds, by giving himself long enough levers in the form of the people he develops and good fulcrums to, you know, move everything move around. Move worlds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Purdy will move them through his sheer work ethic. He, and, and it works is the thing. He... We'll get it done. And I I, want to be fair to Purdy because he does build machinery to help him accomplish this. But at the end of the day, I would really, I'd put the case if there is a Primarch with an insane work ethic, it's Percharaba. But, okay. He's he's got an insane work ethic, but I'm, 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 my mind just comes back to the, the one Bill Gates quote of like, hire a lazy guy, he'll get this done more faster and more efficient. That's Gilliman. That's the, Gilliman is a rather lazy guy relative to Perturabo. And Perturabo, but he's more efficient. Mm-hmm. Perturabo is the one to just punch the issue until it dies. Well, no, that's Angron. <laughs> okay, <laughs> metaphysically yeah. punch the issue yeah. until it dies. And under his rule, you get promoted if you survive, whereas under Gilliman, it's based on merit. Both still result in really good Marines, because at the end of the day, if you survive what Pert Chirabo asks you to do, you're, you're competent. There's no way you survive every single thing Pert Chirabo asks you to do, and you're iffy. You have to be that guy to do it. So there's still some merit to it, but Gilliman's more the kind to go, that guy's pretty useless with a gun, but he's real good at shining shoes. And we do need that every now and then. So let's just move him from the from the front lines and have him shine shoes forever. That's Gilliman's shtick. Now, unfortunately, I'm not here to hype the Ultramarines. That will be next episode. I hope I pray. I hope I pray. I hope I pray. Blood angels. But with the way the polls are going, I don't know if I'll be able to. But my sorrow is a topic for another episode. What... This is literally a situation of red versus blue, and I hope you know red's better. Regardless, what matters for this episode is... To survive under Purdy, you have to be iron within and iron without. It's it's it's, it's, in, it's on the box. Say it with me now, class, right? The downside to this slight contest of minds that we saw is Purdy didn't get a fair shot because it wasn't, oh, please go siege fortify against Gilliman. It was, hey, so we're walking this direction and Gilliman is bearing down behind us. You need to cover our exit. So you're stuck fighting backwards with attrition warfare against the guy whose shipping lines are his pride and joy. That's all. He cares more about, oh man, that got there in two to three business days exactly the way it should have. He cares. That's a guy you're trying to... Let's see if we can get it down to one. Overnight shipping? Ugh. That's a guy you're trying to grind to a halt? It's not gonna... So... He was, he was, that was never going to work. And I would like to see a proper contest of minds between the two of them. Pertrabo's still around, so there's hope. And Gilman is kind of in charge of everything right now, so there's hope. But in this instance, he he didn't get 
He, it was unfair. He was just Horus was just using him to basically stall so that he could get to Earth faster than Gilman could get to him. And then, um, as if <laughs> that wasn't a bad enough job, remember, the Emperor gave him a ton of bad jobs. We covered this in the last episode. It was not great. I want you to remember those jobs as I tell you the ones Horus gave him, oh, which no. were, hey, your brother Angron's gone on a rampage and has l- completely lost the plot. Go wrangle him. <laughs> and that's what Pertrabo had to do. So the Iron Warriors had to go beat him to a pulp and drag him back to the front lines of the heresy so they could continue. Wrangle Ron. Wrangle. Wrangle. Wrangle Ron. I, I, I don't. I don't like that one bit. Wrangle Ron. You don't like that one? I don't like that. No. Mm. Imagine Horace walking up to Purdy and just saying, Hey, Wrangle Ron. I need a box. A, um, a box that's about 12 foot by 12 foot by 12 foot. And uh, how big do you think, or how hard do you think your brother Angron t- can punch? That is, that. Uh, walls that could surpass that. It wasn't even. Thank you. It wasn't even build a box to contain Angron. It was beat him and drag him back here. <laughs> Which, per, to be fair, Pertrabo did. The scene is amazing. That's going to be covered in his own episode. This is about the Iron Warriors. What matters is, hey, Angron's gone off script. Iron Warriors, go deal with it. Hey, the Ultramarines are bearing down behind us. We need somebody to stall. Iron Warriors, go deal with it. Uh, hey, we're getting close to the front lines. We need somebody to go ahead and, you know, prepare fortifications and forward defenses. They made Iron them Warriors. soften the beaches? Yeah! The Iron Warriors are the beach softeners. Why would you make the Iron Warriors the Because they're the softeners. ones... If you want something done, they're the ones who do it. Every single time. Consistently. Everyone else will whine and whinge and just complain. But not the... The the Iron Warriors were tricked by one of their brothers in the warp and left to fall into a black hole. Th- that, that was a key part of their they portion just, of the heresy. They don't care what needs to be done. They'll just do it. They will, they will just do it. But, to but, a fault. But, 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 but... but this time it's worth it because with each terrible job I'm asked to do, I get a millimeter closer to Dorn's sandcastle. And he's been flexing it for the last hundred years, and I finally get to prove that Dad was wrong and he should have put me in charge of that project. And so that's how they seethe, cope, and mauled their way all the way <laughs> to, to Earth, where we realize that they do make a compelling argument as to why they should have been the ones in charge. Because when they arrive, they start tearing down massive swaths of of the... I mean, just kilometer after kilometer of defense is being ripped down when they arrive. This... Okay, I... uh, You have to remember, this isn't a really good engineer. This is like a demigod of engineering. Ha ha ha. And he was tasked by his dad not to build me a neat castle, but fortify Earth. Uh. (laughs) Ah. Okay, fair enough. Like, like the the holy, like the the palace on Earth. I believe they leveled Everest to make it happen, and it is huge. It's it's the size of a small country minimum. It's a sprawling mess of level upon. Think Coruscant, really. Like from Star Wars, think Coruscant, but like, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. but designed to. It, it's one of those things. It's Coruscant, but a fortress world. It, it, it's one of those things where it looks. It's kind of like when you look at the White House, for example. Oh, is this going to get me on a... It won't get me on a list. It's fine. It's like when you look at the White House, for example, and you see it, and it, it's, a, it's a very beautiful building. It's very stately. When when you think of, you know, heads of state, that's one of the first things that, like, at least the homes they happen to inhabit, that's one of the first things that comes to mind. But then, you know, if you fire a missile at it, it's it, it, it will be intercepted. It's kind of like that. They, they have the defenses to intercept that. Where, this where is not an endorsement to fire a missile at the White House, and we will not fire a missile at the White House. Let's state that for the record. Yeah, no, not anyway. at all. It's, it's, more, it's more a commendation of how uh, the government has been able to build this building that is both aesthetically pleasing while defensively capable. Because and, and, well, also keep in mind that those are... Um, and this is, I'm sure there's tunnels underneath. And those are... Uh, 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 um, additions to the building yeah yeah because the i mean ex- the the building wasn't built in the early 19th century with the micro iron dome around it god the u.s army 
I'm, I'm sorry, the Department of Defense never fails to bring a smile. They just, the things they accomplish in those rooms, man. Because when they renovated the White House, they didn't tear it down. They kept the exterior intact and they just disassembled all the machinery they needed to get in and then reassembled it inside and just built that way. Every time they need to renovate that building, they have to go about it in that long and janky way. And sometimes I'm sure they've done it without us, the American people, knowing necessarily. I'm sure they've built bunkers without announcing, hey, we're building a bunker for the president at location X. They, they just get it done and the lawn looks untouched while it's They probably it's have miles and miles of tunnels and bunkers under that building. Yeah. yeah I would imagine. Yeah. It, like it, at least enough to hold the staff mm -hmm. in the case of like god forbid a nuclear winter mm -hmm. and so i wouldn't be surprised if or that's how i envisioned that kind of ethos of this is a very aesthetically pleasing thing to look at but if you look closely you realize oh that that can take why, why is that so heavily defended you know and that's how Dorn built this place. Scale that up to a planet. Yeah. And so even though I say like kilometer after kilometer is being torn down, th there's a lot to get through. It's the exterior that's being torn down, really. Like, it's not... It's, oh, we're just tearing down the fences of it, the White House, it, not, it's, not the walls. It's not even the fences of the White House. It's you're in the District of Columbia. Oh. It, it's sprawling. It's massive. You've torn down an apartment that's just outside the building. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And so... It's still impressive that he's managing this, but we will never get to know fully how this contest of minds would have played out because all hell has broken loose at this point in the heresy. Um, yes, they dragged Angron back to the front lines, but he's a deranged maniac who only cares about a fight if it's a millimeter from his swords. That's it. Well, his axes. Chainsaw axe. Demon, he stomped into a chainsaw. He's, Warhammer he's a, is really he's, dumb sometimes. He's got a big sword. Yeah. I've seen the big sword. Well, it, the, the big so sword looks The cool. sword is a demon. He stomped into the shape of a sword. Which is very cool. So stupid. So good. Yeah. Um, but Angron only cares about a fight if it's that close. Horus is a gibbering idiot at this point. It's less Horus and more all four chaos gods fighting over the controller at the same time. That's where Horus is at the moment. And it's all four chaos gods fighting over the controller for an RPG character. And they go from like doing one thing, like being the cool guy for a second to just like randomly kicking a squirrel in the next. That, that's pretty much what's happening. And then the, the, oh, a large contingent, a, Big enough portion of their forces to be a problem is just following Angron as a field commander, not because he's particularly brilliant or anything, but because he's this massive raging beacon that's just calling to every demon within a certain radius, which the Iron Warriors hate. They hate demons. I mean, that just goes to show that, like, the only thing that matters is confidence, because, I mean... Yeah, sure, Angron is uh, rampaging that direction, but he's confidently rampaging that he direction. He knows what he's doing. Horus doesn't know whether or not he wants to, like, bite the head off of that one space marine over there, or, like, I don't know, huddle in the corner in the fetal position. Well, he's not that gibbering. I, di I didn't mean to make him seem like that much. No, 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 no. He's still competent. It's just very clear that old Horace is gone. He's not all there. He's, yeah, this is, there's, there's four other people in the room. I like that analogy of, like, the four chaos gods are fighting over the controller. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But, but the Iron Warriors, they cope. They cope because they still have their contest with Dorne, and it doesn't matter if everybody else loses. If we win this, if I can just level all this, I'll leave happy. I will, I will have won my heresy, and that's what matters. And it's actually really nice because we see we see Peter Turbo in his bag for a few moments here. We see him in in the flow state of just he's just ripping down defense after defense after defense and he's just truly happy while he's ripping apart one of his brother's toys and he even has this moment where he spots a weak point that could have been left there by mistake but it's also his, he knows his brother's competent so he, he he's pretty sure it's a trap and so he baits um abaddon into being the guy to go like oh yeah you can have all this go glory spring it. yeah no you can have all this glory i found this weak point here please go ahead and nobody survived 
It was just Abaddon left. He, he memed on Abaddon? And he was he just smiled. He was just like, oh, this is neat. No, oh, this is cool. Perturabo's having a great time. Like, He's this just is, like, I read Doran like a book. This is the happiest Perturabo is possibly in the like his entire life. He's in the zone right now. But, like I said, we'll never know which of the two is the best engineer because Horus decided to call Perturabo and tell him, yeah, yeah, I get it, you're doing this whole contest of legions, but shatter your legion, spread them out everywhere because we need bodies, and Mortarian's going to take command. You're just going to help. You'll advise. No, you'll just be in the front lines. To which Perturabo said, that's so cool, give me a second, and then you just hear, hear car starting. Like, Perturabo just said, oh, that's so cool, hold on, hold on, I'll be right back. And then you just see him see Just leave. like footsteps, just like... And then... And then just... Mm. Actually, it's, it's not even like... So it's like... Nyom! Like, you hear, like, tires screech. Too. <laughs> no, you hear the, like, F1 car noises. Yeah. Uh, the, and th- at this point, the Iron Warriors just left the heresy. They just peaced out. They, 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 they were not going to be... It was clear to them that you're no different from the previous guy we worked under. So we're just going to go do this for ourselves. And so they left. And I think it's it's really touching to see this because the up until now, the Iron Warriors, I mean, they're these cold calculating machines. And we're led to believe that this is because this is just the nature of Perturabo. But it's entirely possible, not canon, by the way, it's entirely possible they're only doing unto others what they felt has happened to them, you know? The, the reason they're so brutal with everyone that's directly beneath them is because everyone directly above them has only ever shown them brutality. Nobody's ever said, eh, how are you doing? Can you guys really handle this? Do you need some help? Nope. They just said, you've got this. See ya. And that's, that's what they were left doing. So when you, the only way you've been shown to lead is through force and fear, because I'll be honest... Saying no to the emperor is not a good plan. <laughs> he doesn't request so much as command. It's you. You do as you're told. From everything I've heard about the the um the old crusades, uh, mm-hmm. don't tell him no. Yeah, don't tell him no. It, it was nice. It, it could be why they're so the way the, the reason they're just so terrible. But regardless of all of that, the silver lining to it is, despite being a traitor legion, and then betraying the traitors, kind of, not really, but kind of, there were some loyalists who wound up actually taking the most wins of any Iron Warrior, like I mentioned, because if you haven't caught on, Perturabo's a terrible boss, so not everyone just went with him. They were like, your first order was to ask me to beat Craig into a pulp, so we're just not going to do that anymore. I did, I, you know... I don't feel like that's my calling. Exactly. And so they went off to do their own thing. And they... They, they did the scene from Office Space. You know what? I, I, I don't want to go to work today. I think I just won't. I, uh, I don't like my job. And uh, I don't think I'm going to go anymore. That, and they, they stayed with the Emperor's Light and wound up taking a lot of wins in the process. As for the remaining traitors, like I said, the ones who split off to build the empire of iron it collapsed in on itself after not very long and then the ones under Pertrabo set off to do what they've actually always wanted to do which is just build they just went out to some place in the middle of nowhere and built this massive i'm, I'm talking massive mega structure that was just it was 20 square miles of bunkers towers minefields it's a small city built to their exacting specifications and it was a maze-like mark to show that they were finally free men this eternal fortress that is until somebody with loose lips decided to try and sink the ship by leaking its location before it was finished to think that if only somebody had shown perturabo city skylines oh he would have stayed. He would have been fine. He would have been the best at City Skylines. I, I would dare I say. Imagine Gilliman and Perturabo working together on a, a City Skyline save. That's why I wish I wish they stayed on the same side because those two together would have been such a problem, such a problem. But well, I mean, if anything is to be said about the um, the, uh, the allyship of uh, Dantioch and with Gilliman's help. Sponsored by us. Um, yeah. The Patreon episodes on Dantioch. Uh, it would, th- that would be a thing to deal with. 
Yeah. Because that's just one Iron Warrior. Imagine if it was the, the, the Iron Warrior. Warrior. Exactly. I, I do think Perturaba would be better at City Skylines than Gilliman, and that's coming from an Ultramarine fanboy. I feel like Gilliman would be better at Stellaris or Civ than City Skylines, but I'm, I'm not sure, frankly. We'll, we'll need a book on that. Uh, what, what matters is, though, post-heresy, every single person who stayed loyal, every single one of the brothers that stayed on Team Good, uh, had a lot of issues to work out with their brothers who caused Dad to be in the infirmary. So when Dorn, who at the time saw the, the Iron Warriors as cheap, whiny copies of his Imperial Fists that really just ruined all of Dad's plans and put him in the infirmary, when he heard about this, he was incensed. He had it in for Peter Turbo, and he declared that he would level that heinous stain before it's finished and drag Perturabo back in an iron cage. <laughs> and we're going to touch on that, but we are working on a mega structure of our own, too. Did you know that the tallest pyramid in America is the Bass Pro Pyramid? And that doesn't sit right with me, so we... <laughs> We cannot let that to continue to be the largest pyramid in the United States, and we need your help to build a bigger one. So if you, get, if you want a bonus episode every week, access to the community Discord, and to help us build our own eternal fortress in the middle of somewhere, head on over to patreon.com slash Coda, where you can get more of what you already love. You can also click the link in the show notes. For those of you that are already there, thank you very much. For those of you signing up as I speak, thank you very much. And for those of you that can't at the moment, we are on the mission to 100,000. I want that sweet, sweet external validation of a steel box about yay big from YouTube. And we are so jarringly close to it. I'm very grateful for all of you that have already helped us and continue to spread the word in other comment sections, on TikTok, everywhere. I'm beyond grateful for that. And uh, together, I know we can make it there. So Disclaimer, help. by pyramid, we don't mean to say this is a pyramid scheme. I'm going to deal with that in a second. <laughs> you guys already know what to do. Okay, maybe it is a pyramid scheme that I've not been told about. You, you guys already know what to do. You know all the stuff that the machine gods love. Just do that. And for all that, I have no other words other than thank you. Together, we really have got this. As for the pyramid scheme aspect of this... I can't, what, what I'm going to say about it is I can't fathom how billionaires don't just do more belligerent stuff. Because if, if I, if I, if I tomorrow woke up a billionaire, I would build the Eiffel Tower in the middle of Timbuktu, but one inch taller. Just because. I, I would go to the middle of Alaska, build a street named Giza, and then build the even greater pyramids. I would, I so would. So if that's a pyramid scheme... Guess what? I would level the tower, the leaning tower of Pisa, and by and that I mean it. not 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 level it, like tear it down, like level it, like just, just straight perfect down. straight up. And I would go make my own. Exactly. The, 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 this this is what you're enabling by heading over to Patreon. Mega structures, despite other nations. <laughs> now back to that pesky pesky iron cage. What ensued is a battle that echoes to this day. They arrived expecting a honorable fight from the Iron Warriors, but instead, the first thing they got was multiple nukes firing high into the atmosphere. That, that, that was the opening move of this Iron Cage. They sh The Iron Cage incident is what it's called. They showed up, they sent a bunch of units to the ground, and the second the Iron Warriors detected them, every nuke, every nuke fired at once. Covering it in this radiation, this radioactive haze that made radio communication between those still in orbit, and those on the ground, basically impossible. For those still in orbit, an Iron Warrior fleet appears out of nowhere because they took those nukes as a signal, and they are full of Marines who are itching to board that ship. <laughs> that's They played tall. That's the first five minutes of this of this siege. That's so... It goes on for the next, for the next six weeks. Those on the ground were herded into kill zone after kill zone, fed into trap after trap, and they were left completely pinned down. Slowly, the Iron Warriors would make certain points appear a little weaker, so that some would split off, just diluting that force into basically nothing over these weeks. Over and over, they did this until 
by day six, it was just skirmishes. It wasn't a full-blown assault anymore. And by the next week, the Imperial Fists were just using hand-to-hand combat because they ran out of ammo. By the last week, they were stuck building fortifications with what was left of their brothers. It, it is the most thorough embarrassment the Imperial Fists have ever been a part of. It is rough. Dorn himself has to constantly appear in fights just to prevent his whole legion from going extinct. It's, I, I can't put into words how embarrassing of a moment this is. It's abysmal, but I'll give the Imperial Fists credit. They don't relent. Despite being in such a terrible, terrible, obviously a trap leaked by Perturabo situation. And you want to know the best part about it? What? They... Through their stubborn perseverance, they actually beat their way to the middle of this eternal fortress that he built. So they could finally get to Perturabo and wring his neck. And when they opened that central command tower, they found an empty room with guns pointed inside. And the tower is rigged to blow up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you guessed it! Pretty much! The It is... I... I'm not going to undersell this. The Imperial Fists would have been a fact relegated to history if this was allowed to continue at its current pace. The only reason they're still around is because Gilliman X Machina appeared. And I will will give give Gilliman credit. He did say, what are you doing, Dorn? Just wait, 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 just just wait. Let it be. This feels like a trap. This feels like a trap. Just wait, just wait. And Dorn said, no. We will be tempered in this fire. And boy, howdy. Was he tempered in that fire? It did work. Because the only Imperial Fists left were the pest of the best. Everyone who was... If you were not the 1%, you didn't make it out of the Iron Cage. But Gilman did show up. And he did save them from from this, this thing that they originally built as their incomplete fortress. But really was their masterwork just to basically dance on what was left of Dorn. And... Ugh. Am I wrong in believing that they named it uh, They named it the Iron Cage after the threat that Dorn issued them? No, that's what the incident's called, the Iron Cage incident, because Dorn said he'd drag Pertrabo back in an Iron Cage. Okay. And... <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, uh, to this day, there are, <laughs> there are Imperial... There, there are uh, Iron Warriors who... Hold that memory dearly. Because they can just... There's this one. I, I, I remember when I was researching for it, I read this uh, <laughs> this passage from the book. And they're talking about how just broken Dorn looked on the battlefield. And how just dismayed Gilliman looked upon realizing, Oh my... <sighs> Where did all they? Where did they go? All I can, the the vision in my head that is being painted right now is two iron warriors in like the break room in the iron cage, getting mugs of coffee. Just like, you remember that one assault? Oh my god, the look on their faces! They, they, yeah, they, they, they hold that memory. The, the, the guy specifically who's talking about it has said he was very careful to guard it as he aged, so he would always be able to go back and remember just how distraught they looked in that moment. It's just like, I should have brought my camera. Because second only to dad being hit with a backbreaker, that's really high up there in traumatizing moments for the for the family. It's, it was it was it was a combination of not only was Dorn utterly humiliated by Pertrabo, but it was by his own doing. Pertrabo played him because he knew he wouldn't let this slide. He can't let this He would slide. walk directly into the trap. And so not only is it dismay at just this situation, but how it's self-inflicted. And that's the real, like, that's a real stinger for it. Regardless, Chaos saw this in standing ovation. Pertrabo per- got a standing ovation, and he was promoted to a demon Primarch, which kind of sucks, I'm going to be honest. A promotion. It, well, it... Promotion. No, I'll be fair. Being a demon Primarch, great. Sweet gig. You, well, I won't say this is across the board, but one of them just can't die anymore. He has a set respawn timer, and that's just how he functions. <laughs> like, you will become 
so much stronger by taking that bargain. But the reason I think it's lame that Perturaba became one is his the Iron Warriors hate chaos despite being serving chaos. They will see because if you work for chaos, you get mutated slightly. It's actually a pretty big problem, and why the chaos, the forces of chaos, are always trying to steal loyalists' uh, gene seed because theirs just gets screwed out by chaos's effects over time. But the, I mean, just look at the look at the Death Guard. Yeah, <laughs> they're just slowly sloughing mm-hmm. as as they go. But um, Mortarian, I'm oh, sorry, oh, you made me think of the Death Guard. But the Iron Warriors will scor- They'll see a tiny chaos mutation, scorch it off. Immediately. They would sooner hack it off and then replace it with a machine than have even a tinge of chaos. So it's always been... I I personally always thought Perturabo would be the type to be entombed in some massive machine. Some basically walking sarcophagus of iron that he engineered only for himself is how I would have imagined it. But regardless, we haven't seen, we haven't seen him directly. So who knows what he's done. In that time being, what we do know is he is Demon Primarch. What what does matter today is the Iron Warriors continue their streak of if I can't have it, nobody can. They they continue to stay petty and they continue to keep up with their usual shtick. Perturabo is still the worst kind of manager. He he you he will shoot the messenger every single time. The person who told him, "Oh, your planet rebelled," wound up with liquid shoulders and a broken back. Uh, um, um, it's actually a really funny scene. Liquid because, shoulders and a broken back. Because this person clearly doesn't want to give him the news. He clearly doesn't want to say this. And then he, Perturabo starts getting upset that he won't tell him. And then he tells him. And Perturabo gets so mad. If I remember correctly, the book describes it as his face contorts into an expression that would normally be humorous. Like, he's so furious, his face twists into this thing that in most situations would be funny, but he's towering over you, and reflexively, everyone in the room just grabs for their gun. They just see his face when he hears this news, and everyone in the room just... <laughs> that's such a great way to. That's such a great way to phrase that. His face contorts into a, a shape that would normally be humorous. Yeah, but and there's such permeable dread in this room in that moment before Perturabo just loses it, grabs this guy by the shoulders with the full force of his. You know, he's, he's a demigod, he's a demigod in a massive metal suit. Grabs this guy by the shoulders, immediately liquefying them. I mean, immediately just. <laughs> Like, just water. Ugh. <laughs> and then treating his back like a glow stick. Before, before, hun- I love this scene so much, but before hunching down immediately, and this just insane look takes his eyes. He looks deranged in that moment. He's having and, a Joker moment. And it looks, it genuinely looks like he's deliberating, painting the entire room a different color. And everyone there is just so tense. Everyone is filled with this moment of, I have to leave. This this feeling of I have to leave. But they know first one who moves gets it. So they're all stuck there. With this this guy who towers over you. Massive metal suit just hunched down. Just like you know, you know, have you you know what a human is like there's tons of potential energy stored in something, and you can just tell it's ready to spring. Like sprinters right before they, they launch off the blocks. Mm-hmm. It's that level of tension, and you're just like uh oh, well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm so dead. That's the kind of manager Perturabo is to this day. So that's great. I'm surprised more of them haven't left his service. Um, but <laughs> for those that remain under that guy, they will regularly take civilian places, fortify the hell out of them, making them ugly with these living. They have this thing called living razor wire. <laughs> you can. It's barbed wire with a vengeance. Yeah, and what they'll do is they'll take over civilian places, fortify them like it's Fort Knox, and then when they're about to lose, they'll dip through some tunnels that they dug and then detonate the whole thing. <laughs> just because they're so this terrible. Just, it's just a fun game for them. Yeah, and <laughs> even though that does sound deranged, they are the chaos faction with the least gibbering madmen in their ranks. They did give us the Demonculaba. I'm a level with you. 
that is an Iron Warrior creation. No, that that is a bit mad. Mm-hmm. But but relative to Angron, is that it? It's one really bad thing versus continued, sustained insanity, you know? Nowadays, they, they, they also had a, a brief civil war where they split up, but even though they split into various war bands nowadays, if Perjurabo says, we're doing something, they will all rally under him. It's just like, hey, mm-hmm. family reunion. They, they, they worship chaos in the way that they... It's They're working for chaos, don't get me wrong. They will ally with chaos all the time, but... If Perturabo tomorrow says we're going loyal, they will ultimately follow Perturabo. They see him as their savior almost, the one who tempered them into this force. Um, nowadays, like I said, they build those massive, hideous fortifications that just, they're described as monuments to malice, which is such a good description. You really don't want anything to do with these guys. And if you are being attacked by them, you will know basically immediately because it's just going to be artillery fire and it doesn't stop. It just keeps going. It just begins and it doesn't end until nothing is left. And this isn't the the usual routine of siege, fortify that they get up to. They, they, They do do that still. It's they have these massive hulking things called obliterators where you take a marine. I wonder what those do. You take a marine, you'll be surprised actually. You take a marine, you infect him with this virus that turns him into a one thing army, and they become obsessed with their weaponry and technology and melding with it. And slowly but surely, they'll start absorbing more and more weapons and heavy armor into themselves, becoming this weird mesh of flesh, steel, and plastics, generating their own ammo from within and being stupid accurate about it. I'm, I mean, regular Marines kind of look like they have aimbot because of the, like the twitchy way they move. Obliterators, it genuinely looks like somebody's cheating because they'll be running around firing from every single... And you'll see the guns aiming themselves as they're just like scanning the battlefield constantly. For right now. It's horrifying. They're massive. It's just... Fire. You'll see when you're putting the art up for this. It's just weapons everywhere. Weapons everywhere. And it just... It looks like you just stacked sentry after sentry after sentry on top of one thing. And it's just walking slowly forward. And usually, they're completely insane. As you could guess, melding with your gun would do. But... Under the Iron Warriors, first of all, they have the most obliterators of anyone, who to thunk, and they're more reined in. Some of the Iron Warriors actually sign up to be obliterators on purpose, and if I remember correctly, one of their higher-ups, one of the guys in charge, is a functional obliterator, able to give out commands. Just this massive hulking thing with guns twitching around everywhere. Just, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And They really went down the cyberpunk <laughs> route, didn't they? And... Oh no, that's not it. Because remember how I told you the Iron Warriors work hard? I can't think of a better way to showcase the force that they can apply to anything than. So Gilliman is losing. And his reaction is build me a suit of armor that keeps me alive, and then build better Space Marines using those two things, we can maybe win. The Iron Warriors are losing, and their response is, kidnap a Tyranid ship, sever its connection to its mom, send hostage pictures, and then infect it with the obliterator virus. And so they just have this massive thing that's just taken over by that virus that they use to get places and siege. What? Yeah. And it is such... That's how they win. Who else could accomplish that? Do you know how many bodies it probably took to do it? To kidnap a Tyranid ship from its mom and then send hostage pictures? And that's that's just how they accomplish tasks. What the hell? It's, it's part of the biggest problem with the Demonculaba. It's really efficient. The worst way you can make anything, but it works way too well is the problem. So, the... The Iron Warriors today are truly one of the most terrifying things you can see leaving the warp. 
thankfully, they don't do that often. Because, like I said, they mostly serve under Perturabo. That's their that's their guy. Um, and they are working toward something. Like, like you all know, the galaxy is split in half. Chaos is taking huge victories left, right, and center. Who knows what's happening in any one corner yeah. of the galaxy. But there's this new um, guy called... Guy who called Vashtor, who's a demon trying to become a big demon. And he runs this Forge of Souls, which is where he's basically like a demon arms dealer. And they have been spotted working together, Iron Warriors and Vashtor. So it's possible that they're going to help him become a big demon and then serve under him. Maybe they're going to stab him in the back. Maybe they're working towards their own ends. We don't know. What we do know is Perturabo still draws breath, meaning that everyone has to be upset about that if if, i'm sure even he's upset about that eh, honestly he's doing his own thing nowadays he's less angry i wouldn't say that oh i wouldn't die on that hill at all but i I, say did he finally find like a zen therapist or something no but i think he gets to choose his battles now Ah. so while they're still horrific at least he got to choose them right so I hope that we see... It's also been said that Perturabo has been slowly looking at the various defenses of the Imperium. And now that everything's split, he's just ready to start applying pressure. He's just planning. And considering, plotting, again, scheming. see the Tyranid ship example. That wasn't even him directly. That was just Iron Warriors. If he gets involved, if he decides to put that work ethic towards whatever he wants he's just looking at that like it's listen scary. that was really cool i'm proud of you kiddos let's be- make it bigger rookie numbers run it back <laughs> and so that is the iron warriors uh pretty much everything from the very beginning up to today thank you as always for tuning in and we will see you next week for the ultramarines i'm hoping no 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 sanguineous and the blood angels thank you for being you red team <laughs>